Today, we celebrate sustainable development and the people behind it. Tonight, the awards will be given, but right now, we will have the opportunity to listen and get inspired by both the award winners and two other sustainable developers. The Gutenberg Award for Sustainable Development aims to put the light on achievements for sustainable development. The prize has since the year 2000 been given to great achievements of persons like Mr. Kofi Annan, Mr. Al Gore and Mrs. Gro Harlem Brundtland. And the prize is a collaboration between the city of Gothenburg, the Västra Götalandsregionen and 13 companies. The theme of this year's prize is Closing the Loop, and our two award winners are, through their work, remind us of the importance of how we need to change both our individual ways of living as well as the society around us to be able to handle the future. Please welcome one of this year's Gutenberg Award for Sustainable Development Award winners, Dr. Michael Biddle. So firstly, I want to thank the city, and I, I will thank them once again later, um, for first creating this award and, of course, even finding me, let alone deciding um, that I was worthy of such an award. Um, I'll go into more about what I think about that later. But I certainly get the intent of the award this year because that's what our company's been about for 20 years, which is closing the loop on the plastics industry. And the intention I had when I started the company was to create a more sustainable plastics industry, and not just in the environmental sense, in the economic sense as well. Each and every day at our recycling facilities around the world, we process about one million pounds of other people's stuff. Now, a million pounds a day sounds like a lot of stuff, but it's just a tiny drop in the bucket of how much stuff we throw away each year around the world. The United Nations estimates that we throw away 85 billion pounds a year of just electronic waste, one of the most rapidly growing parts of our waste stream. And if you combine that with other durable goods, like automobiles and trucks, and particularly if you combine that with packaging waste, and I focus on packaging because it's uh, largely plastic, uh, that number is quite significant, on the order of uh, 200 billion pounds a year of plastic waste. Now, it's kind of hard to get your he head around, or at least it is for me, 200 billion pounds a year. So I like to use uh, an artist uh, that I have a lot of admiration for, Chris Jordan, to help me put that in perspective. So Chris uh, Jordan, you can go to his website and look at a lot of his amazing art. I've just selected a couple that help put waste into perspective. This maybe looks like some type of industrial landscape. As you zoom in on it, it you can see it has a three-dimensional character. It goes quite deep. And as you zoom in further, you see it's made up of a bunch of plastic cups. And in fact, he built this artwork out of one million plastic cups, which is about how many plastic cups we use in the United States on airline flights alone in just six hours. Another one that, I, that he's done that I like, and he's got others, these are just a few examples, is the, the Return of the Dinosaurs. I think it's appropriately titled. As you zoom in on the T-Rex head there, you'll see, eventually see that it's made up of a bunch of plastic bags. And to create this artwork, he pulled together about 240,000 plastic bags, which amounts to about how much the world consumes every 10 seconds. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more perspective on how much stuff we use and discard of each and every year. So when most people look at piles of discarded stuff like this, I think the first thing that comes to their mind is garbage or trash or waste. What we see as a company is above ground mines. And the reason we see them as mines is because a lot of valuable materials went into making these products in the first place. And 
not only valuable materials, but embedded energy that was required to mine those materials and then transform, purify and transform those materials into the shapes and forms that we use in our products each and every day. So I see valuable resources and I see embedded energy when I see mountains like this. I'm going to spend just a minute and a half to show you our process in video format. If you want to visit our website sometime, there's many more videos that would, will show you much more detail of what we do. So it typically starts with a metal recycler, like here in uh, uh, Sweden would be Stena, where they shred the material to small bits, they recover the metals, they leave behind what's called shredder residue. It's mostly plastic, but they miss some metals, circuit boards, there's carpeting, foam, rubber, glass, stones, wood, you name it in there, even occasional dead animal. And we then send it through a more traditional part of our recycling process. I like to call this the Willy Wonka part of our process. So here we're separating away the stuff that's not plastic from the plastic. We end up with a mixed plastic mixture here. And then we send it through the more complicated part of our process, still all mechanical, where we wash the plastic, we separate it, we grind it to small particles about the size of your small fingernail, and then we separate it by type, by grade, and even eventually by color. And it comes out the end of our process here, this is before color sorting, one type, one grade of plastic. After color sorting, it then goes to our blending silos, 50,000 pounds. We then feed this to spaghetti-like making machines that make spaghetti-like strands of plastic. And we dice and cut these into small pellets that becomes the currency of the plastics industry. And this plastic replaces plastic made from petrochemicals on a one-to-one -one basis directly. If you have time, please stop by the small booth we, we have here in the audit, uh, outside the auditorium, and you can see some of these uh, materials, the starting material and the, the ending product. We're doing this on a global scale now, so not only have we developed the world-leading technology at doing this, we're the first really global plastics company. Most recyclers start off uh, regionally because they're typically taking scrap from manufacturing operations. We had to become global very quickly because our customers are global. We're selling to Fortune 100 companies that manufacture around the world. So in 2006, we brought up a plant in Guangzhou, China, right in the heart of the electronics manufacturing industry. And we brought one online later that year in Austria. And more recently, we brought one online in the UK. Altogether, our plants can process about 350 million pounds a year of input material. Again, what sounds like a big number, but when you have five, over 500 billion pounds of plastic produced and consumed each year, we're just at the very starting point of recovering this valuable material. So instead of plastic, your end of life plastic ending up on a hillside in some developing country, or worse yet, up in smoke, you can now find your old plastics back at top of your desk in your, in your office, printing out uh, papers, your next uh, research report on top of your desk. And in fact, the, the printer on the left, I just have to point out, yeah, this shows up pretty well there. That's a, a mirror finish. And the top of that, well, top of the both printers, but the top of the printer on the left with the mirror finish is 100% our material. And when they first entered in this project, they thought uh, we would only be using recycled plastic in a hidden part at maybe 20% recycled and 80% virgin. But by the time the product went to market, we were in several parts, including the most visible part, at 100% our material. So I'd like to end where I started, and uh, I do have a couple of short videos after this, so <laughs> please hold off. But I would like to wrap up the Your Stuff message. And I have to give my daughter fair play time since she's here as well. This is uh, Jessie, and I love her, her T-shirt. It says, listen to your mama. Uh, she turns 12 tomorrow, by the way, so she's quite excited to be here. And so, well, first let me say, the listen to your mom is quite appropriate because Mother Earth wastes almost nothing and reuses practically everything, and that's what drives our business. We're not there yet, but we try every day to get better and better to use everything that comes in our door and turn it back into a product instead of waste. But I'd like for you to also stop thinking of yourself as a consumer, because it really starts with each of us. 
I've always hated the label consumer because it assumes I've used, I'm using it once and I'm throwing it away. We've got to get out of that mindset. Think of yourself as borrowing resources in one form until they can be converted to another form for someone else later down, later in time. And finally, I'd like for you to uh, think of that, allow me to change that last toddler rule just a little bit to if it's broken, it's Mike's stuff. Thank you. Dr. Michael Biddle started MBA Polymers in his garage 1992, 20 years ago, shortly after completing his chemistry PhD. He wanted to prove that plastic from complex waste streams can be recycled into highly quality raw materials. He developed techniques for separating and refining plastic waste to produ uh, produce attractive quality assured raw materials that, that, that replace new oil based plastic. The business has since grown from concept into large scale industrial production in the US, Europe and China. Dr. Biddle is awarded this prize for combining deep technical expertise and entrepreneurial brilliance with the drive to close the loop. His solution contributes to reducing waste and saving the Earth's non-renewable resources. Dr. Biddle inspired other entrepreneurs to develop innovative high-tech solutions in the waste sector. Welcome, Dr. Biddle.